Hey guys, it's Sherlock here. Today we've got a few things to talk about with Season 5 coming out. First up, we have some new artifacts. Some of them look absolutely game-breaking and completely change the meta. Which will take us into our second section here, which is combat and meta changes, along with some testing that we did on the PTR. And then finishing up with some important information that's going to help you get ready for Season 5. For those of you who stayed at the end, there's a small bonus. We get to see how our speedrun team absolutely threw our PB on a need last week. As always, thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Let us know what you think down below and enjoy the video. Okay, first up we have the Creed Boots. These will deal an extra 15% more damage and have a 25% crit chance. On these boots you have Freedom and Refreshing that are locked in. As these are more of a PvP leaning boots, you may end up going for something like Elemental Aversion or Shirking Heals depending on your build. But keep an eye on the website in the coming weeks to see what recommended perks will be best for these boots. I imagine these here will be used for more of a PvP style assassin build, get in, deal some damage and get back out. So for us in the PvE scene, we can move on. Alright, next up we have Phoenix. This here is an artifact amulet. It says Stam Recovery and Purify on it. I was watching Mr. Mojito stream today and he was testing this alongside the hatchet. Unfortunately, the Phoenix Revival and Defy Death do not stack. They will proc at the same time. So if you're planning on doubling up on this with a hatchet, sorry, you're out of luck. I imagine for this, it's another PvP one. You'll look at putting health on it. It does have some use in the PvE scene for maybe a skip set. When you're doing some speed runs, you could put something like a thrust protection on there just as another chance in case you get tapped by an archer while you're doing a skip. Next up, we have Jilly's Gravity Gauntlets. This here, whenever you take damage, you gain a power charge, increases the damage of your next attack by 3%, up to 30%. This here has Enchanted Ward and Health on it. What you will notice is I took these screenshots from the dev video, that's why they will have Defile on them. Unfortunately, Defile is only on the new Hatchet Sin, which we will see soon. I can't see this artifact getting much use at all. There is just much better artifacts within the heavy class and very few builds will actually make use of the extra 30% of power. Tempest Fury, so we had quite a bit of fun with this one on the PTR. You can proc it with a BB offhand, which gives you the zooms. Otherwise, you can just play around with the whirlwind, just smacking everything 10 times. I feel like this is gonna be a bit of a meme grade X. I feel like this could be quite fun in like a, a point scenario, just standing on the point, whirlwinding, giving you the extra fortify and slash damage protection. This here has the keen speed and the fortify whirlwind locked on it. So I imagine for your last perk, you would look at maybe going either a gem slow or thwarting strikes. I believe this one here drops from the new raid, but don't quote me on that one. Alrighty, so next up we have Sin. This here is now the second hatchet artifact alongside Freya's. I've heard people talking about this being a solid PvP build with a syncretic bow of hand, allowing your poison and your Keenly Jaggers to stack for longer. What you do need to be careful of is Keenly Jagger no longer stacks between weapons or players. So depending on the scenario, Keenly Jagged can be a dead perk. Another thing I saw on Mr. Mojito's stream today, which I'll actually put his link down at the bottom, just because we've mentioned him a couple times. He was testing it alongside the Butcher, and the Butcher would actually override the Keenly Jagged on Sin and his other weapons, even if the Butcher's Keenly Jagged was lower. So something we need to be mindful of, if there is a Butcher in the group, on the team, in the arena, that their Keenly Jagged is likely going to overrun anyone else's. We did some damage testing on this. Flat damage, it does seem to be a little bit higher than Freya's, but because of Freya's higher berserk up time, it is slightly better on time to kill on the dummies. So I think for shorter, more bursty fights, Sin is going to be a lot better. It was more prolonged where you want to keep berserk up time, Freya's going to be the better option there. For the last perk on this one, you're going to want to put a gem setting pin in it. This one here appears to drop from Colossus of Memon, if we look at the newer database, who is in kind of the upper right side of Brimstone, and the Great Wall of Nebit Head. Next up we have the most anticipated Venom. This here I was so excited for, I thought this was going to be game breaking, and it possibly is. Later on in the video I'll show you the testing for this, and you'll be able to find out whether this is going to be game breaking new meta, or a flop. On this one, heavy attacks will stack a poison damage doing 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, it has defile on this picture, but you cannot get defile on it. My suggestion would be going for bleeding sweep and just using this as like a dot damage weapon. Go bleeding sweep, have a rune glass in there, and you're going to be doing huge dot damage. Looking at the newer database, there doesn't seem to be any information on where this drops yet, so I imagine it'll probably be from the PvP track. Next up, we have the most exciting artifact of Season 5, Nature's Wrath. This here has Nature's Blessing. 
the Empower expires 200% faster, but you deal 20% more damage. What we found with this one on the PTR is the wording is not clear at all. But again, it changed the word expires to reduce. That is exactly how it works. The Empower will reduce by 200% and you'll deal 20% more damage. The way this is currently working on the PTR, it is reducing your Empowers by 200%. So it is effectively, if you have a 10 second cooldown, it is removing that 10 seconds twice. So it is putting you at a minus 10 second cooldown. So any Empower that is not static, Leadership, Honey Stone, Damage Con Ring, Oblivion is instantly cleared. The effective Empower cap with this is 39% by the time you add those Empowers together. There is a few weapons that have Empowers that can override this. Berserk on the Hatchet, Onslaught on the Greatsword, Forsaken Pact on the VG. I haven't tested the likes of the Mage weapons yet because they don't really affect us much in the PvE scene, but a rule of thumb with this one, if it has a cooldown on it, it's not going to apply. You cannot use this chest piece with Evade Rapier either as you cannot use Omnidirectional Evade and it does not allow momentum to stack either. So if you're an Evade Rapier player where you're switching from maybe a Greatsword to Evade Rapier on bosses, you're going to have to stick with Nimble Coat. When it comes to the likes of using Finisher with a new chest piece, you're likely going to want to take Thwarting Strikes instead of Kenny Empowered and then this chest piece will be a DPS increase. You can use the likes of Punishing Gems or different Ring Glasses in your armor to boost this as they are in power as well. You do have to keep in mind that they have an inbuilt cooldown so on fast attacking weapons you're not going to get the most out of it. Next up we have Iron Heart. This here when you're not in heavy loadout you'll gain a 20% more max health. We've done some rough EHP calculations and it still looks like Void Dark Plate is going to come ahead. There are a lot of factors that can come into account here. We have different fortifiers from Sword and Shield, Flail etc. So this isn't going to be an exact representation but definitely shows how close these two are and how unfortunately Void Dark Plate probably still reigns king. First up here we have the EHP on Void Dark Plate and Full Heavy. Then we have Ironheart and Full Heavy, both at 300 con. Then we have Void Dark Plate and Medium and Ironheart and Medium. Next up we have the long anticipated combat and meta changes. I spent far too long yesterday on the PTR testing all sorts of different things. When I first saw the new artifacts like Venom and Nature's Breath, I thought there was going to be game breaking meta changes. Keep in mind that my PTR testing I was trying to play at 250 ping. So the exact damage numbers and time to go on dummies are going to be representative of real time but they are consistent in testing with each other so even though you may be able to kill something 10 times faster on live it was a controlled environment within the ptr so i was testing like against like there is a change to the loadout damage medium equipped is going to be the new baseline there's been a little bit of controversy around this some people think medium is getting a 10 percent decrease in damage realistically medium is staying where it is it is just becoming the base value we did test it between live and on the PTR, and it did seem like there was a 3% damage decrease for medium. Uh, the heavy equip load has now got a 20% decrease to CCs. The big change here is the increased threat generation with taunting gems. This is huge, it's so hard to hold threat now. Even it's quite a high DPS tank. When you've got really good DPS on your team, like a rapier or a solid spear, they just pull aggro so easily, so this is a really nice change coming. The light equip load now has a 15% damage and 30% outgoing healing. We tested this just with some basic weapons on PTR vs Live and we found there was about 3.4% damage increase on light. So yesterday on the PTR we were doing some testing with different weapons. My main goal was testing Nature's Wrath, how it interacts with different weapons and comparing it to stat pants. Once again don't worry about the exact numbers, hey I didn't have bisque gear, I had a lot of ping. The important thing here is that we're testing like for like, the actual numbers themselves and times don't really matter. We're just trying to find the best stat splits and the best armor slash and powers to wear. Once again to try and explain Nature's Wrath here, any sort of power that has a cooldown on it effectively is going to be no i don't know if this is how it's supposed to work it may change in live but at the moment they basically just don't work when it comes to serenity you cannot use your dodge and power you cannot use your relentless power or the power that stacks on serenity itself so when it comes to nature's wrath we are actually down roughly 20 to 30 percent in power these testing here we are also not testing with leadership or oblivion you'll see we only tested with honing stones and damage con rings as you'll see in stat pants at a baseline you're already at 49 percent in power this is with a slash ring and not including oblivion whereas on nature's wrath you're at 29 percent not including oblivion or leadership so greatsword is one of the only weapons that will still be able to hit their 50 percent cap 
while still wearing Nature's Wrath. A Sword and Shield on the tank, or maybe even a DPS is going to be mandatory if Nature's Wrath is going to be meta. As you'll see here, we had the best results with 250, 350, 50, and I was actually only testing the third heavy attack damage, as it was the most consistent way I could actually get consistent numbers to then check the damage difference percentage-wise. As you'll see here, it's actually a very small DPS difference across the two, so you need to look at the teams that you're running with. If you have a Sword and Shield, if you have a healer that's going to be keeping Oblivions up, you really want to go for that Nature's Wrath, otherwise you probably just want to stick with Stat Pants, and then this way you can keep yourself in power and carry those pugs to victory. Next up we have Sin. I just tested this with Ignited Diamond in it so I could try and get the Defile stacks up. It looked like the best stat split for this was 350-200. This here I was just testing it with the four light attack chain and adding them together. Uh, when I was testing this 300-300 was actually very close in damage to 350-200. The first three light attacks were actually stronger. The only damage difference was that last light attack. So if you're going to go 300-300 I'd recommend doing three light attacks and then cancelling the fourth one with a throwing hatchet whether it be running throw infected throw especially with the infected throw buffs and this here will likely be higher damage one thing chat wanted us to test was greatsword with the venom offhand so i know mahito was testing this today he had some with oblivion and leadership helping him get his powers up and he actually managed to get it down to 47 seconds but he was consistently seeing around a three second difference between serenity and trenchant strikes or trenchant crits at the bottom i've got 42 percent of power here i think i'm wrong that there should actually be 29 percent of power because all I had was Honing Stone and Ring and Onslaught Stance. The times here are actually super similar. So this may need more testing on live to see if it's actually viable. But if it is, this is a really cool option to be able to play Venom offhand with a Trenchant Strikes main hand. Honestly, you'll probably look at changing Keenly Jagged to something like Leeching. Maybe even Keen for bosses that don't have a back. This here was mainly just a fun one that people wanted us to test. Okay, so the long-awaited Venom. I thought this here was going to be game-breaking. It is still quite a solid weapon. But in our time to kill on the dummies, it was slightly behind a two light attack spear. I was testing the heavy attacks here with someone with leadership and oblivion and the highest crits I could get to were about 15 and a half. As you can see though between Nature's Wrath and Stat Pants very close damage wise. The biggest thing with running Nature's Wrath over Stat Pants is you cannot get the Empower from Skewer which is a 20% Empower that has almost 100% uptime. Next up I tested Spear with a finisher offhand. What we did was a full damage rotation so this is one Skewer, two light attacks, perforate, two light attacks, and a sweep. What I was doing for this damage was accounting it to be the second rotation, so I included a full stack of bleeding sweep ticks into the damage. This here is damage per second, and as you can see, it is very close. Alright, last up, we have some important information for you coming with Season 5. There's a bunch of changes here, like an increased coin cap, which came at the perfect time when everyone in the game is the poorest they've ever been. They've moved around some stuff within the inventory space time with shards it's gonna be annoying for a little while we're gonna lose track of where things are but we'll get used to it in no time one of the biggest things you're gonna to want to get ready for season five is your food it's going to be a big change in the food which i'm sure all of you have heard about already so i'm not going to spend too much time on it basically the fish based food are going to be the new 48 stat points and the banana based food is going to be 44 stat points i haven't seen it myself but i've been told the legendary fish drop rate is going to drop in season five so people ask me how to make money in the next season i would be getting as many legendary fish as you can as likely at the start of the patch they're going to go up in price they're going to fluctuate a lot i think people would have stacked up on them they may dump them in the market so it's going to be careful i wouldn't go buying too many of them off the market but in between doing other stuff i would definitely get a stash of them all right guys so in terms of a huge meta shift i don't see it coming in season five there's going to be a couple different builds that we can play with the likes of venom offhand on a normal great sword so you're not stuck on serenity a couple more options on risky bosses to run venom nature's wrath is likely going to be meta which means sword and shield tank or maybe even a dps is also going to be meta and damage con rings are going to be necessary outside of this i don't see too many changes coming i'm excited to do the raid and hopefully not ruin too many speed runs like you'll see at the end of this video thank you guys big shout out to my patreon supporters if you want to come see me live see this testing come visit me on twitch and drop a comment below and let me know what you thought about this video thanks guys and see you next time uh, sure, I'll get as far as you can. No, he's walking towards you. That's alright. Just kill him, just kill the dog. We can just just leave on me, just leave on me, just kill him. Real fine stuff. Well, it's on someone. I'm gonna stay because it's coming. Okay, yeah, yeah.
You can do it, you can do it. We still got this. No, no, no.